Hi everyone, I'm Sylvia Johnson. Welcome to Women Work Your Faith. And today I am covering the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, May the 1st, 2022. Our subject for today is Healing the Blind Man. Our Bible basis comes from John, the ninth chapter, the first through the 17th verse. Our Bible truth. Jesus ministers to people by meeting their need. Our memory verse. Therefore, said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. And that comes from John, the ninth chapter and the 16th verse. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a synopsis about what takes place in the lesson today instead of going verse by verse. And then we'll just tackle what the lesson aim is telling us to focus on for this time. So Jesus is with the disciples and they see a man and this man has been blind his whole life. And they ask him, uh, you know, who sinned? Is it him? Is it his family? You know, is there someone down the genealogy who sinned and cursed this man? And uh, that's something that we often do, right? We see a person who has an affliction or a problem, and our thought is um, that it is something that has been earned or deserved. Uh, whose fault is it that they're this way? And what Jesus answers them is that he says, mm -mm, nobody. <laughs> and that this person is afflicted for the glory of God. And that just sounds strange, right? <laughs> like, why in the world would God be glorified in someone's pain or suffering? As we see as the lesson continues on, that God is glorified because Jesus heals his affliction with the power of God. And that's where um, our lesson aim really picks up in the things that we're supposed to learn because Jesus does this on the Sabbath. And so at a time where the Jews are resting and they're not um, partaking in any activity or work, he performs a miracle. Uh, for the benefit of the person who was in need. And so uh, this causes, you know, great debate. <laughs> so the blind man who's been blind his whole life gets healed on the Sabbath. And that's where the problem starts. <laughs> the, now, and the thing about it, the problem wasn't that he was blind. Oh no, the problem is that somebody fixed it on the Sabbath. <laughs> so... Now, the people done run and told Jesus out here healing people on the Sabbath, and a debate begins. And the debate, interesting enough, is between people who don't have the right or the spiritual authority to judge the works of Christ. Um, and we do that now. Uh, we get so superior in our thinking and so, to the point where we believe that, you know, I don't know, we know God and we know everything he gonna do. And when we see somebody do something that doesn't fit our script, all of a sudden, you know, we're condemning their actions or looking at them in a way that they may be perceived as wrong. And that is where our lesson aim is really focusing. What is right and wrong in this situation and how can we as people work to make sure we do what God really desires and what is truly right? So the first point in our lesson aim is to know that traditions should not be used to ignore human suffering or needs. Now, here in the Bible, they were observing the Sabbath, and Jews still observe the Sabbath to this day. And that was written into their law, that they had to keep and honor God's Sabbath. Now, many of us, right, who are in um, different denominations of Christianity have traditions. And, um, you know, we have schedules and rituals and programs and those are good things because those are things that we do to remember God, to keep him at the forefront of our minds, and to keep him as the center of our lives. Um, but God had a purpose for his people. And we need to remember that in our zealous pursuits of doing those things 
to honor him, the best way we honor him is to love his people. Now think about it here. Here was Jesus walking with the disciples and there was a blind man on the Sabbath. Jesus could have said, come back in two days and I'll heal you. I can't do it today. But that's how we do people. Okay? Um, you know, if, if I had time, I would do it. But you know, I got to pray at 12 o'clock. What are you going to talk to God about? Uh... Lord, please act like you didn't see me ignore that person that needed me. Come on now. We need to remember that those traditions should be um, the outward expression of the faith that we have. But they're not the only expression. The true expression that we have for how we love God and we honor Christ and we follow him. And that we live a life after him is that we take care of the people. So if we're on the side of the road or walking on the side of the road and someone is in need, you know, do you feel that in your heart? Or do you look at them like the disciples looked at the blind man and say, what they do to get there? <laughs> you know, um, wonder what they did in their past to deserve this. We, come on now, y'all. We done looked at the homeless people on the street and said, you know what, they probably did this or are they... Why don't they get a job? Or um, why don't they stop? They're probably going to spend all their money on drinking. None of that discussion is for us. What can we do to help the people? What did God give you? What power, what gift did he give you to meet the needs of those who are suffering? Or those who have a need that has not been met? So let's check ourselves and follow what the lesson aim tells us. And pay attention to the language in the lesson aim because it says tradition should not be used to ignore human suffering. It's a condition of the heart. Um, we use our traditions as justification for not getting involved, for not having to do any work, for uh, allowing someone to stay oppressed while we ascend to higher levels in life. Um, and we, we do it and, and pretend and act like we're honoring God and he ain't pleased with that. He wants us to love his people. Lesson aim number two is to reflect on a situation where we felt discriminated against or ostracized. So a person um, in those times with a disability, especially blindness, was useless. And in this situation... Um, even the disciples looked at him as if he were at fault. And so when people look at your situation and they, they see it as you're at fault, they treat you some kind of way. Um, and again, I'll use the example of homeless people. People turn up their noses at them and they look down at them and they're disgusted by them. I remember someone telling me when I, when I had suggested doing something at a homeless shelter, we don't want to go over there, you know, <laughs> um, because we tend to feel not too good <laughs> about people with diseases or um, conditions or struggles in life as if we're kind of worried it might rub off on you or something, you know? We may not have a disability and we may not be developmentally delayed, but we've had an experience or a situation in our life where we were not like the status quo. And we felt that feeling of being outcast, um, of being looked down upon, um, of being shunned and blamed for our situation or punished for our situation as if we called it upon ourselves. Even the disciples here in the Bible asked Jesus, whose fault is that? Because it's somebody's fault, right? And Jesus was like, no. <laughs> but we as people in our minds, we think that's somebody's fault. That person got that because they deserved it. Wonder what they did. And that's not true. Now, on the flip side of that, Jesus told us on the Sermon on the Mount that those people were elevated in the kingdom of heaven. However, on earth you're not. But remember that God is watching. And we need to watch ourselves to make sure that when we experience those things, that that hardness, now that will rub off on you. Their, their affliction may not rub off on you, but that hardness of the heart that, that, that comes when people treat people a certain way, you can catch that. So we need to watch ourselves. And I'll tell you why. You need to treat people right. Jesus says so, because he's going to ask you about it when you see him. And I can prove it because it's in the Bible.
And so when the Lord is separating the sheep and the goats, um, he explains those who did right and those who did wrong. And what is this wrong? And remember, we're reflecting on those times of feeling discriminated or ostracized against. And it says, I was hungry and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in. Naked, you clothed me not. Sick and in prison and you visited me not. And the people will say, you know, what are you talking about? This never happened. I don't remember this. And he said, when you didn't do it for the least of these. So when, when, when you didn't do it for us, um, for those people that I said, you know, we, we turn our nose up and we blame them. Those are the least. And it's the same way with us. When I am in need and people choose to ignore me or discriminate against me or to intentionally do harm to keep me down. Um, that's Christ that they're working against. And so what the lesson is calling us to do is, um, in addition to our tra traditions and our observances, because I'm not, and the lesson is not telling you to neglect those or to throw them away. Um, but to remember that our purpose is to find ways to be of service to others. And we know that this is true because we're called to do so just totally throughout the Bible. And so I'm just going to leave you with... Uh, a number of scriptures that I use as a reference to um, direct me and how I should be towards my fellow man. And just take a second uh, in the comment section and just pop in real quick and tell me um, and everybody else, what are some scriptures that you use for reference um, when it comes to helping those in need or loving one's brother? In the scripture, Isaiah is talking about fasting. And um, that's one of the reasons why I chose the scripture because it is a religious practice that many people observe. And so in the sixth verse of the 58th chapter, he talks about what a person who is really in their heart trying to consecrate themselves to God should do. And, you know, he lists these things. Uh, Loose the bands of wickedness. Undo the heavy burdens. Let the oppressed go free. Break every yoke. And it says, deal thy bread to the hungry and bring the poor that are cast out to thy house and see the naked and cover him. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. So the fruit of the spirit, what is brought forth, what grows from that? are these characteristics. And if you look at them, they are all characteristics that you show to other people. And so Jesus tells us in John, the 13th chapter in the 34th verse, uh, that he gives us a new commandment. And that's that we love others as he has loved us. Jesus gave himself for us. And we need to love each other that much. And if you um, cannot be bothered to uh, disrupt your schedule, your ritual, your tradition for the love of another person, then you don't love God the way you say you do. You have to remember in our lesson, um, and I didn't go verse by verse, but as you read the lesson, Jesus, when he answered them in the ninth chapter in the third verse, he said that this man hasn't, been sin hasn't sinned and his parents haven't sinned, but his affliction came so that God could be made manifest, so that God could be brought forth and shown in the world today, so he could be made known in the world today. Your work will make God be manifest in the world today. If I love my brother, if I love my sister, if I see about their needs, my work will show God to the world. And so their situation, while we're, we're, you know, kind of turn our nose up, acting like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what they did to deserve that. Their situation may be there intentionally by God so that you can come with your light. So that you can come be salt and season it up a little bit and show people God in the earth. And if you, you know, kind of hesitating about it. Go on down to the next verse. And four, he said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. You don't have no time to waste. 
Those people who are in need that God brings before you, he brought them before you today because today is the day to get it done. We need to make it a purpose in our hearts to reach out to those people and allow, and allow God to be made manifest. <clears throat> to have God show up in the earth through us. And if you think you don't have to do it, remember the example that I said I was coming back to when the Lord separated the sheep from the goats. He didn't say it was because they, they made all the religious observances and you know, the rules and regulations that we like to make. No, he said because you did these things for him and doing them for the least of these or you didn't do them. And I know that I want to be on the side of the people that did it. So, um, it's a really good lesson. Like, <laughs> I hope you all have time to read it from start to finish and really delve into it and to just... Think about our day-to-day -day acts and how we treat one another. Hopefully you are showing love to, to not just, you know, you and yours, but to you and all of God's. And that this is an opportunity for you to encourage others. And if you're not doing it, that's fine. You heard it today. <laughs> and I hope after you hear this lesson, the Lord will touch your heart and, you know, lead you in the direction so that you can also meet the needs of others. Regardless of you know what personal preference we have that tries to stand in the way so with that being said thank you for joining me i hope you enjoyed this lesson kanisha and i will be back soon with another video until then be blessed